oh i love this question i love this question okay um cool so i think that the best thing that this generation can do uh coming through and, and wanting to come to the bar is just to be themselves i'd walk into a courtroom and i would be the only other black face in the courtroom My name is Abimbala Johnson. I'm a criminal defence and professional regulatory barrister and I practice in 25 Bedford Row. Um, so basically, if you get into trouble with the law or if you're a professional and you get into trouble with the body that kind of regulates the standards for your career, I'm the person to call up and hopefully get you out of a bind. <laughs> One of the roles that I have is I chair an independent scrutiny board. Um, effectively, the role that I have there is to scrutinise all of the 43 police forces across England and Wales in relation to their implementation of an action plan that they're coming up with to make the police force, to use their own words, to make the service um, an anti-racist police service. Um, so the idea is that they are going to eliminate or do their best to reduce racial disparities in terms of not only how they treat their own police officers, so black police officers, but also how they treat members of the public when they come into contact with them, whether that's as suspects, as witnesses, as potential victims. Um, there's a lot of racial disparity that we see in the um, criminal justice system um, and frankly black people tend to be at the brunt end of the majority of the measures that you look at. It was the death of George Floyd uh, and I know that was an American case but for me, so that was June 2020, um, and for me I heard over the last few years leading up to that there had always been these news announcements of black boys, black men, black women and girls being killed by the police, um, predominantly in American cases. But of course, as a black barrister practicing in England and Wales, those stories or those experiences are reinforced very often and they're reflected in some elements of your own criminal practice. So what's happening was, you know, I was hearing these stories about things which were happening stateside. I'd walk into a courtroom and I would be the only other black face in the courtroom. That really started to kind of get to me psychologically in a way that I don't think I had really kind of like taken the time or given myself the space to process until um, the first wave of the Black Lives Matters, um, Black Lives Matter protests, and then the second wave, which obviously were sparked by the murder of George Floyd. And what I started to think about was the fact that as a barrister in this system, which is a very white dominated um, decision making system that affects a lot of black people, I felt that I was a barrister who was unable really to change the system that I was working within. And I sort of started to feel like a cog in a wheel, that I was just part of this process that continues to um, create these racial disparities or contribute towards these race, racial disparities or at the very least replicate the racial disparities that we see in wider society. It certainly wasn't doing enough to reduce those, to reduce those experiences. So I've always done things like diversity, inclusion, um, and equality kind of work um, alongside being a barrister, but that isn't enough. That's not enough to actually be kind of pushing forward towards anti-racism. So the first thing that I did was starting to have really open conversations with my colleagues in chambers. Beyond that, I wrote this challenge that I put on social media about like trying to be more anti-racist in day to day. That led to me writing an article in Elle magazine about my experiences as a black lawyer. And again, just reopening those conversations and letting people see the kind of things that I experience, um, the things that I I witness and so on in the courtroom. And since then, it's just kind of um, sort of expanded in terms of the remit of what I've been doing. And I'm really happy about it, actually. I've, I've been able to be on an advisory board for the Howard League for Penal Reform, uh, where we've come up with a lawyer's guide to being anti-racist in the courtroom. So how to go beyond just representing your client and actually like pushing forward 
the you know pushing against the racial disparities coming up with creative solutions being culturally competent in the way that you interact with your clients all of that was was started um by me just deciding to bring that into work and no longer just have those discussions in private with my black family members and my black friends and so on I just thought actually what I need to be doing is when I can when I have the kind of strength to is to open up those conversations and have them with my friends from different backgrounds or with the decision makers from different backgrounds to try and get their ear and try to push these things forward it's meant that I now have a career that I think better reflects the values and better reflects the uh, aims that I have towards like actual institutional and systemic change around these matters. I think that something that people need to bear in mind is that the legal profession needs to be reflective of the society that we serve. Traditionally, the legal profession is very pale, male and stale. What we're seeing now um, is this movement towards a truly more inclusive profession. It's not happening fast enough. Um, we're not getting it right in many ways, but there's definitely that movement towards it, at least in some kind of, in some factors. And I think that what is going to be really interesting in the next few decades is the people who are going to be the gatekeepers, the ones who are going to be making those decisions around recruitment, um, who have influence over retention and promotion in the profession, are you know this millennial this precocious millennial generation that i belong to and we're being followed up by this even more precocious even more radical even more forward-thinking generation there is a challenge that they are setting for us to be more open and to be more accepting and i think that what they are doing is that they are challenging the concept of professionalism they are demonstrating to us that it's not about what your hair looks like it's not about conforming to a particular way of presentation. It's not about even, you know, getting everything absolutely perfect in terms of um, your the eloquence of your submissions. It's about the substance of what you're saying. It's about the um, insight that you can bring into areas of society that are often overlooked and ignored. It's about the fact that it enriches the profession for us to have a broad spectrum of contribution. The best thing that this generation can do uh, coming through and, and wanting to come to the bar is just to be themselves, to show that being yourself is not something you need to compromise on, that you can still be excellent and be yourself. Um, and that we're the ones that need to change. We're the ones that need to be more accommodating. We're the ones that need to be more open minded because ultimately we're the ones who are going to benefit from that. <laughs>